Well, 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 look who's back, fellow adventurers. I know it's been a very long time since the last video, but I'm back with a stash of adventure pack Kentons ready to unleash here on YouTube. As some of you may know, we've been out exploring the Galbation of Romania back in June. My friend Alex and I went embarked on a thrilling journey through the rugged and untamed landscape of this country. It's very difficult with the bike. I couldn't be more excited to share this with you today. I know that some of you have been waiting for this upcoming series, and guess what? The wait is now over. But before we hit the road, guys, I want to give a massive shout out to all the brands and the people behind them who agreed to come aboard and get involved in this project. So today's video is about presenting all the gear and equipment from these brands that we use during our expedition. Okay, first up, let's talk about Revolution Race. They came aboard very early in the project and I couldn't be more grateful about the incredible support they provided us with. I want to give you my favorite piece of gear from the brand. Uh, for campsite, for example, a pair of wood socks, a base layer with a built-in balaclava that can be used in many different ways. On top of that, a tracker fleece. I've got it in orange to match the KTM or in green to blend into the environment. There are a few different combinations possible, mostly depending on the weather. If it's a rainy day, I would go for the full Cyclone outfit because it includes a waterproof shell jacket as well as a waterproof yet highly breathable pair of trousers. Otherwise, if the weather allows it, I would go towards something more versatile like these, the No One Pro Pants for optimal comfort and flexibility. Yet, my favorite of all time are the GP Pro Pants. The protective reinforcement here on the knees, as well as the stretch panels pretty much everywhere, makes it super durable and comfortable. So to you guys watching this video, I cannot recommend Revolution Race enough. It pretty much combines everything like comfort, durability and functionality. All right, now, if there's one brand that truly understands the heart and soul of true off-road adventurers, it's Moscow Moto. Moscow and I, we've been collaborating for approximately a year now and I'm thrilled to have them on board. Simply because Moscow gear never disappoints. So this is the Reckless 80. That's where we pack pretty much everything. Well, basically, it's our house for three weeks. As far as I'm concerned, I like to pack things according to three categories. I've got all the foods here, the clove and campsite equipment and everything that's technical. Let's take a closer look. So the left-hand side of the Reckless 80 is all about food. Nothing more. In this, I store 20 days of freeze-dried food, including breakfast, meals, soups and snacks. Food is a crucial aspect of our off-road adventures. The idea was to explore the Galpatian mountains in Romania and to be fully self-sufficient for days, even weeks. Navigating off trails can be mentally demanding, requiring sharp focus in decision-making. Adventure riding but so much strain on muscle groups that you need to consider the proper intakes, like nutritious intakes. I don't see any drawbacks in using freeze-dried food, actually, as long as it's tactical food back. I don't know about other brands, but it's really good. It's like a meal, except it's tasty, nutritious, and portable. Let's talk about the right hand side of the Reckless 80. On top of it, we've got a 10 time Skypad mattress. Pajak sleeping bag, a spare clutch, you know, from uh, Reckless, some uh, Moscow Moto straps, I've got an additional uh, tube, some uh, tube repair kit, first aid kit, some tools, uh, so that's pretty much everything that I've got on the right hand side of the Reckless 80. All right, friends, let's take a minute to talk about Pajak, a fantastic partner that we had on our journey. Um, I think sleeping bags are often overlooked and yet they play such a major role in the, in the quality of the sleep. We definitely underestimated uh, the weather conditions in Romania in June by approximately 10 degrees. Alex and I, we've been uh, sleeping in the Pajak Radical 1Z, which has a temperature range between zero to five degrees for a comfortable night experience. In my opinion, now that I've spent 20 nights in these sleeping bags, I'd say that the minimum minimum for comfort is between five to 10 degrees. And the thing is the quality and the design of these bags are insane. I mean, look, at the size of it. It is so compact, it makes it the 
perfect sleeping bag, according to me, for two-wheel adventures. I must admit, we were very cold sometimes, but mostly, and that might be the reason why, of course, we were at an altitude of 2,000 meters uh, in the mountains with super heavy winds, and we just didn't realize it would be that cold. So if I had to do it again, I would definitely go for the Panzac 4Z which has a temperature range between zero and minus seven for a comfortable experience. But don't get me wrong, this sleeping bag is fantastic. And I'm deeply grateful to have been able to partner with Padak on this expedition. That's pretty much it for the uh, left side and right hand side of the Reckless 80. Oh no, I forgot, I just saw it, the P500. I put the P500 here on the right hand side of the Reckless 80 because it's easily reachable and super handy in plenty of situations. The P500 is a very cool survival knife. It has a very long blade. We actually use it as a machine. So the P500 is our go-to weapon when we go for a walk uh, deep in the bush in the forest. I mean, you never know, you are in a bad territory. It's kind of a last resort uh, in case of close encounter. I know it might sound a little bit ridiculous because what are you gonna do uh, against a big, massive bear? But of course, we also had 100% of the time it was on our belt. We've got some bear spray. According to me, if you go in this kind of country, in bear territory, you need to have that. Okay, so now that's pretty much it for the side panels of the Reckless 80. Let's see what we've got here on the top of it. My clothes, the tent side tent, and some camping, you know, basic stuff, basic gear. So this is the Tensile Connect two-person treated. It's a fantastic setup for our Carpathian expedition. This provides the most comfortable night experience I ever had. Nothing beats the feeling of being suspended amidst the trees in the wild. So what I love the most about the Tensile Connect two-person is how big it is and I'm talking about its spaciousness. It can easily accommodate and comfortably accommodate two adventurers so that we can move around in the tent and we can store all the equipment, the gear, the helmet, the body armor, everything either underneath the tent or inside the tent. The last great feature is that it's not only a treatment. I know I mentioned that most of the time we use the tree lines to set it up in the air to, to be suspended, but many times actually we slept in alpine areas where there is just no tree. So the good thing is with this tent, you can actually set it up on the floor without any additional piece of equipment, no additional gear. It makes the Connect 2 person treatment a dual purpose tent and that's why I love it so much. But let's be honest, the main reason why we chose the Tensile Connect two-person treatment is because it kept us safe from, I want to say, curious animals out there in the wild at night. When exploring in the wild, sharing the territory with its wildlife is part of a thrill. But we knew that we had to take a few precautions, especially in the bear territory, each and every night we would use the bear sentry fence to, you know, like create a secure perimeter around the campsite with the sole purpose of deterring curious wildlife from getting too close to the campsite. And it happened a few times when, you know, we just woke up in the middle of the night with some very weird noise around campsite. That was just scary. So to know that we had this electrical fence was peaceful for the mine. So setting up the bare sentry electrical fence is actually super easy. There's a few different options when it comes to uh, power supplies. You've got this little box with eight lithium batteries. And for Unfortunately, we tried this one on the second night and it didn't work out as expected. I don't really know why. So on the third night, we used the power supply alternative, which is the motorbike. We have here a secret cable that is directly plugged to the 12 volts of the battery. So we need the cable. I planted five sticks, one close to the power source. It transformed the 12 continuous uh, voltage into alternative one. So one shock per second. And theoretically, it's supposed to deliver around 10,000 volts. White blinking means one shock, one shock. Now it delivers 10,000 volts. And I can tell you it's enough to deter a massive grizzly bear. Unfortunately for our legs, 
a deep touch defense. Well, unfortunately, Alex just received a shock from the bear fence. The electrical fence actually provided me with, you know, a, a certain peace of mind and feeling of security, knowing that we had that added layer of uh, protection of defense against potential wildlife encounters that you would consider unpleasant. So to all the outdoor enthusiasts, and especially those who camp in bear territory, I highly recommend you check out Bear Sentry because it provides a peace of mind and it makes you enjoy your adventure to the fullest. So now let's move to the front of the motorcycle and talk about tank bag. As I mentioned earlier, Alex and I, we've been running the exact same setup for the Reckless 80, except for the tank bag. On my end, I've been running the hood tank bag, and the reason is that I've been carrying inside of it uh, the drone camera gear, so I wanted something to be fully waterproof and would not require any additional rain cover. On top of it, I've got this beautiful piece of equipment, the M73. I just love this knife, I mean, look at that. It looks absolutely stunning. When I'm riding, I'm also carrying the Wildcat 12 liters backpack with the chest rig, which is from Moscomoto, of course. In the outside pocket, I've got only my binoculars from Sightmark, which are the uh, Solitude series. Fantastic binoculars. And inside the backpack, I only have three liters of water. The reason is that I don't want to carry too much on my shoulders and on my back. All right, so that's pretty much it with uh, Moscow luggage. With Moscow, it's all about confidence and peace of mind that their gear provides. When you're deep in the wilderness, in the heart of the wilderness, you actually need equipment that can keep up with the intensity of off-road exploration because off-road riding is very, very demanding for or the gear and equipment that we take. The folks behind the brand Moscow Moto, they truly understand the demands of challenging off-road travels. And in my opinion, that reflects in every stitch and strap of the product. If you are serious about off-road exploration, I think you won't find any better ally than Moscow Moto. So let's move back to the rear of the motorcycle. What I'm about to show you is actually what you guys have requested the most, my Pelike setup. So the main idea of the Pelike is was to carry my camera gear and to have something easily removable from the motorcycle, yet 100% fixed when you're riding. The Pelike is directly installed on this top quality rack from Parent Moto. So the Parent Moto rack comes with multiple holes and spaces so that you can screw or strap your luggage or pretty much everything you want to have up there. But to achieve this feature, I'm using a seize back play from SW Motec with the quick release system. I've attached this back plate directly onto the pedicase case using silent blocks to dampen uh, most of the vibration. To be honest, I've broken my in-camera stabilization twice already, so that's a cost that you have to take into consideration. But in my opinion, you can't have it all. You have a super handy removable setup, but it comes with a few drawbacks, definitely. You pull, you take it off. So, so easy. Let's see about the inside of the Pelicade. So it's quite straightforward. I've got the foam uh, top and bottom uh, here, and I cut it to match the, my camera gear. So here I've got the camera body, of course, the, the one I'm using to shoot. I've got my zoom lens here, and I've cut it so that it doesn't move once I'm riding, okay? So we have ordered a USB adapter on uh, AliExpress, and we 3D printed a holder so that it fits in the foam and just doesn't move once it's there. Uh, this USB adapter is directly plugged into an aviation plug connector here, which in turn is connected to the after-ignition cable um, on the motorcycle. 